Your healthy community is underwritten by the Quantum Foundation. Quantum Foundation is dedicated to advancing access to health care and education for the residents of Palm Beach County. Quantum concentrates its mission in several areas to assure that all Palm Beach County residents have access to quality health care at reasonable cost, to improve quality of care, provide support for people with chronic health conditions, and to promote healthy communities and lifestyles through educational programming. Good evening and welcome to Your Healthy Community. I'm Tony May. Each week here on the show, we bring you positive stories that are impacting your own personal health and the health of your neighborhoods. Tonight, a term you may not have heard yet. It's called medical home. It's one that you'll be hearing in the future because it's a wave that wraps around services for your own health to make it a bit better. Welcome this evening, Dr. Michael Gervaisi from Florida Community Health Centers. Thank Hello. you. And Robin Kish from the Healthcare District of Palm Beach County. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. And that term medical home, it was, I had never heard of it, but it is a really uh, hot term right now when it comes to helping people get more healthy. Doctor, just tell us what it means. It means having a comprehensive program in place so that patients have access to their own personal physician, well, they'll have access to their medical records and they'll have access to uh, expanded uh, hours of care uh, so that everybody can be taken care of in a comprehensive manner. And Robin, um, at the healthcare district, obviously primary health care is really the mission. How does something like this wraparound idea, concept, help you all fulfill the mission of you know, helping people stay healthy. The Healthcare District of Palm Beach County's mission, as you say, is to ensure access to a comprehensive healthcare delivery system and the delivery of quality healthcare services to all residents in Palm Beach County. So by establishing a medical home, patients, residents have that access, as Dr. J. Racy said, to the medical services they need and have that preventive care, which is so important, so that during the course of their lives, they can see that physician who has a, a knowledge about their health care, about the medications that they may need, and that they can be in that home setting, if you will, um, so that they can stay healthy. And I think that you really touched on the preventative angle. We've heard that in other countries, uh, preventative care is not this, you know, thing that's way over here and people don't really know about it and insurance companies don't really embrace it. We're coming around to where without preventative care, our health system is going to be in more trouble than it already is in. Doctor, as a medical doctor, why do you think preventative care took so long to be part of our normal conversation? There's a whole bunch of reasons for that. Probably uh, the, the top two that come to mind are the philosophy we've had in this country for a lot of years is that you only go to the doctor when you're sick. Um, and that can work fine up to a point, but unfortunately, because of the cost of medical care and, and the prevalence of chronic diseases now, it's really much more important to address things before they become chronic problems. And with that term medical home, um, the Florida Community Health Centers, other health centers around the uh, Palm Beach County, the Healthcare District, the Palm Beach County Department of Health, some funders like Quantum Foundation all said, you know what, we want to let people know what medical home is because obviously we're all kind of getting to know it. So a day was made, it was a proclamation from the County Commission where everyone opened their doors to kind of invite the uninsured and, the, and those without a lot of insurance in to kind of find a medical home. Uh, it was just recently and we were visiting some of those centers. We're going to bring you this story and be right back. Those seeking medical help filled waiting rooms early, each hoping to get health care they desperately needed. Old, young, black, white. The only common thread among these folks, they don't have health insurance. I've been laid off of work, so I haven't been able to afford insurance through work and being unemployed, not being able to afford it. 
Um, so that's kind of why I'm here now. Harry Weiss's story was told over and over again by the people we met throughout the day-long event. Many had health insurance before, then lost it when they or their spouse lost their job. Some would sacrifice their own health so they could make sure their family got help. So your kids have a doctor, but you don't. So what happens when you're sick? I go, you know, if I arrange cash money, then I go to doctor, otherwise I stay like this. This hallway, we're using it for providers to see patients that do not have a medical home. Actually, these are volunteer docs that are part of Jupiter Medical Center, and they're actually volunteering every Saturday, and they will be here every other Saturday, even after this event. At the Jupiter Auxiliary Health Clinic off Indian Town Road, organizers and community leaders used Medical Home Day to celebrate the opening of the new free clinic. We are providing a, a medical home to follow peace patients longitudinally and to keep them out of the emergency room, to keep them out of doctor's offices unnecessarily. And it's a, it's a, it's a demographic of patients that fall through the cracks. You know, I should be able to afford something. I'm 30 years old, so you would think I should have a good job and I should be able to afford stuff. But even me, as unfortunate as it is, uh, I don't have it. I don't have the insurance, I don't have the money. And without this place, I probably wouldn't get any medical, see medical at all. Jupiter Medical Center, El Sol, the Quantum Foundation, and many other partners invested in this site so that those waiting for care don't have to struggle to get it. In the past, they'd have to try to send these folks somewhere down south, West Palm or, or wherever. And obviously, transportation is going to be an issue. Uh, you know, the cost of getting down there is going to be an issue. Time. Uh, some folks can't take off work if they're lucky enough to have a job to, to go, you know, seek this kind of assistance. So um, if, if you're able to do something, again, in your community right here, it just makes it so much easier to deal with, you know, situations that we as a community are going to have to deal with at some point if we don't deal with them as locally as we can. About 20 minutes away at the Department of Health Clinic in West Palm Beach, another packed waiting room. You go to one doctor for your cardiology problems, you go to another doctor for your um, arthritis, and you go to another doctor for your heartburn. Uh, and what happens there is that there's nobody that, you're not going to any one place that knows your history, that knows your family background, and that is there to keep you healthy, not just to treat your diseases. The idea is to have one doctor that knows you and your medical history so that you don't end up in the ER, which is a costly visit for all of us. Because we all pay in the long run for those who don't have health care. Uh, you pay for it in higher hospital bills, you pay for it in um, everything that is related to health care. It's not just an us and them problem, it's a we problem. School nurses played a key role in Medical Home Day. If we find something abnormal with him, we'll refer him to the doctor over in that area. You can just step up here, please. This is what we do, too, at the school level. Since I am a school nurse, we pretty much do the same thing in the schools. Of course, we're there to take care of the students who are there uh, during school hours, but occasionally we find an abnormality, and we do refer to one of these places, and that's why I'm here. Tina says she cleans houses for a living. Recently, her feet have been swelling and eyesight going. Several years ago, a doctor warned her she may be a candidate for diabetes, but Medical Home Day is the first chance she's had to get a checkup. My husband got laid off. I haven't had any insurance. And um, it was like $275. And, you know, when you got to pay the bills or, you know, you tend to do that before you take care of yourself. Tina says she paid doctors cash until she couldn't anymore. She doesn't think health care should be considered a luxury. It should be within reach. I just feel like health care is not within reach for somebody that really needs it. This day of countywide care is all about the community coming together to help people just like Tina. Because sometimes what you need is not a big plan, you need a small plan with big action. This is an opportunity for us to say, hey, everyone get on board in a short period of time, let's get all the clinics open, let's get as many access points as we can and get people primary health care right away. Well, we met a lot of patients in that story that truly thought this day was a lifesaver, and it became a lifesaver. Robin, you kind of have a broad view, and you've talked to a lot of the clinics through the healthcare district. 
we actually trans saw people transported that were walking heart attacks. We did, and it goes back to that statement about prevention is the key because so many folks, especially now when people are either losing their jobs or they have work and maybe their employer doesn't offer health coverage, they need that medical care and they may prolong it. And by prolonging it, they may have some acute conditions that they're not even aware of because they haven't been getting the checkups and maybe the tests that they really need. So when they did come to Medical Home Day, we saw that some had some acute conditions that needed immediate care and there were several people who came to Medical Home Day to see a doctor who had to be transported by ambulance to a local hospital for immediate treatment. And um, Dr. Gervasi, out in Pahokee, you were kind of handling things out in the Western communities. Was it much of what we saw in that story? It was. Uh, we saw over 60 people. We wow. had a few people that came in that needed immediate attention. We saw them for office visits right then and there. And there were others that we scheduled to come in where they can establish themselves with the physician now and actually have a medical home. And were people kind of reiterating what, what we've been talking about, that it was a choice between, you know, the mortgage, the car payment that gets them to their job perhaps or gets them to look for a job and health care and they ixnade health care? Uh, yeah, we, and we hear that all the time. It's probably one of the most frustrating parts of my job when I'm seeing patients is that they have to decide how they're going to spend their, their finite dollars. And lots of times health care will take a back seat to their immediate needs. And at the community health centers that um, you all run, talk about that concept because I'm not sure everyone realizes what they are and what they provide. Well, we are a part of a network of federally qualified health centers where we're a private nonprofit organization and we'll see anybody uh, regardless of their ability to pay. We will see them on a sliding fee scale basis uh, with a minimum fee and uh, they can get a comprehensive uh, set of primary, comprehensive primary and preventive health care. Um, everything from labs to office visits to, to x-rays uh, to even medications for some patients. So it, it's comprehensive care, primary care for patients. And we have to say that the, the community, uh, the FQHC model is actually one that's non-controversial in Washington. Uh, across the board, Republicans supported it. Uh, President Obama um, tried to pull out extra funds when some were being cut in this last round. Um, and the healthcare district has certainly supported these clinics most recently with a special um, grant to some of them. That's right. In December, the Healthcare District Board of Commissioners passed a measure that launched a new expanded access to the uninsured program. It's a six-month pilot program, and the board designated $1 million in funding from reserves to support three health centers in our community that were selected through an RFQ, Request for Qualifications, process. And one of those centers is the Florida Community Health Center, Pahokee Center, along with Found Care and Genesis Community Health Center in Boynton Beach. Found Care is located in Palm Springs. And all of these centers are receiving funding, as Dr. Gervasi can tell you, to cover the costs for newly uninsured patients who may not have that medical home and who may not health, have that health coverage through their COBRA. They may not be able to afford COBRA after they lose their jobs. And so it's a stopgap initiative. So for example, if a resident finds themselves uninsured, they may apply. It takes some time sometimes to get that eligibility process finalized, and they may have to spend down some of their assets before they qualify for health coverage. So they can go to one of the centers and receive the care that they need, say they're on blood pressure medication, get that important medication and continue to have the medical services to keep them healthy until they're able to get health coverage. And I think both of you could answer this. We'll start with you, Robin. We, we I think, sometimes stereotype the so-called uninsured, especially in a community with a lot of an immigrant population and with all the political strife around some of these hot topics. What I found on the Saturday of Medical Home Day was there was no stereotype. I mean, a lot of us are one paycheck away from being in the bind you just described, at the healthcare district, you see people every day that need help, you know, affording insurance. Is that what you're finding? We're finding that's the case, and we're seeing the numbers grow, especially in our affordable health coverage program called Vita Health. The healthcare district provides health coverage 
programs and options to 45,000 residents every year. But as we all know, based on the latest U.S. Census data, there are more than 265,000 uninsured residents in Palm Beach County right now. About 28 percent is what the estimated numbers are. It's very high. And to offer these options and have a medical home day where the health care district can inform the community that these options exist and the health centers also have their own navigators. We were able to staff our eligibility staff and a number of the health centers and medical home day and we had so many people coming up and asking for our applications, asking questions about the process. So we were able to get the word out that these health coverage programs exist, our coordinated care program, Vita Health. We also offer a Medicaid HMO uh, under personal health plan and uh, you know, these are programs that are really important to our community, so the more people who can avail themselves of that, the better. We have a uh, toll-free number. Customer service representatives are available during the week. They speak English, Spanish, and Creole, and people can call 866-930-0035 and find out more about our health coverage programs for the residents of Palm Beach County who qualify. And Dr. Gervasi, do you think that uh, it's a unique um, to our uh, our population because of the many different mixes of cultures that are here that this problem exists with the uninsured? Is it a cultural problem? Is it a unemployment problem? I mean, you've seen it for decades, so you can really speak to it. It's, unfortunately, it's not unique only to Palm Beach County. It's, it's a problem that is nationwide, uh, clearly in Florida and in our area here in, in, in uh, the Treasure Coast and here in South Florida. Uh, it's a real problem where it's not, it's a misconception that it's just the poor and unemployed. It's, there are working people who have just lost their insurance, their employers uh, have, have dropped their insurance or dropped the amount of coverage they have, and many of them don't know what resources are out there. So this Medical Home Day was just the most wonderful thing. This is the first time in all the years I've been practicing for 25 years where that whole, getting rid of that concept of just having a large health fair uh, just didn't cut the mustard. You identified people who had some problems, but they didn't know where to go for follow-up. So this was just a wonderful idea to get people plugged into care, into a regular care, a medical home. And you know what I thought was um, great about the day is it was a collaboration of so many, we would go on the rest of the show to name everyone, because it was truly across the board. And in the environment we're in in our country right now, with the political di you know, division and divisiveness, People laid down their own views on health reform, health care, politics, and said, okay, we're doing this. Um, health care district you know, navigators were there. Other benefit navigators were there from literally Pahokee down to you know, Boca up to the very northern tip in Jupiter where they opened the new health center we saw. Is that really, though, what, what in your opinion, in this field, it's going to take to make people get the health care they need just putting down the politics and, you know, picking up the stethoscope, so to speak? Uh, absolutely. It's at, we've been meeting regularly with many of the safety net providers here in the county, and it was like a light bulb went off when they realized that it's amazing how much you can get done when you don't really care who gets the credit. There's too much to be done, and there's too, ma and too many people that need care. And I think what really hit home is because it wasn't just the poor anymore, but it was neighbors, relatives, um, and even even family members, uh, when you realize that something needs to be done, so it was it was remarkable that so many people did put their own th their own agendas on the side to be sure that we had something that was focused for the people of the county. The healthcare district had school nurses also well, in many right. of the centers that's conducting right. blood pressure screening. So, truly, uh, there were so many people who invested their own time and efforts and some of the feedback that I got just from the staff was how rewarding it was to be able to serve residents who are in so great of need. Uh, so it was, I think people on both sides um, really saw the value. And, and this was an innovative, I think, uh, way of following up on the community health planning project that five organizations in Palm Beach County took part in and with the help of the consultant Trip Umbach which came out with a report to say let's strengthen the primary care safety net and by doing that through funding with innovative strategies I think uh, we'll be able to keep Palm Beach County healthier. And I think one of the things you, you touched on, the rewarding um, part of it for the staff, um, many people volunteered on this day. 
like you said, the school nurses were recruited and put in different places they'd never been before because they're used to being in their own little comfy school setting in their own little health you know, clinic. And the ones I met at Found Care were just blown away by the people walking in the door. There were young people, you know, just maybe 19, 20 who mm -hmm. had been on kid care, but at 18, they're off kid care. Their parents can't afford health insurance for them. And they hadn't seen doctors in a couple years. And just because they're young doesn't mean they're, you know, you know, not susceptible, certainly to the communicable diseases that go around, you know, with the colds and the flus, and they were doing flu shots. And I really was impressed by the attitudes. It was a Saturday, people were working literally from six in the morning till six at night, and no one seemed upset. Everyone was happy to be there. Was that what you got out in the Western communities as well? Absol <coughs> absolutely. Um, the nice thing about working in our nonprofit organizations that we work with is people are not there because they're making a lot of money. People, Amen. People are there <laughs> not because... Not the ones I've met. Right. They're there because they want to make a difference and, and they have to have it in their heart. And so uh, for us, we had, we had a staff member come down from Fort Pierce to volunteer on Saturday to do face painting for kids. Oh, that's so sweet. We had somebody come from Okeechobee, who's one of our health benefits navigators that Robin uh, spoke about, uh, come down from Okeechobee to help with that process because that was one of the biggest parts of the day that I think that was really Absolutely. important to help plug people into, into benefits that are available to them. Because one of the things I found out coming to um, this industry of healthcare is the benefits part is almost as significant to somebody's health, to mm -hmm. be honest with you, as the actual, let me do your blood pressure, let me check your cholesterol. That's I right. mean, because there's so many benefits, not just healthcare district, which has them, but across the gamut, and a person walking in, newly unemployed, mm -hmm. has never navigated this system, and it is quite the system, those people were, uh, they were there, they were giving them the checklist, they were saying, okay, come back on this day, we'll run you through the system, you may be qualified for Medicare, Medicaid, some other type of insurance, kid care like we talked about. I, I really applaud that. Is that. Is that kind of where you think these, everyone needs to go, where the benefits people are just as significant as the doctors and nurses? Uh, there's no doubt, absolutely, because n not only for healthcare services, but some of them are eligible for food stamps, uh, if they're not eating right, it's going to impact their health. Uh, so there's all kinds of things that they can help them with, and it definitely should be part of any ongoing, uh, any ongoing programs. Absolutely. And uh, and touch on this because I talked to some of the people in the field on on the Saturday, but I want to make it real for people watching who say, "Well, this doesn't touch me. Mm -hmm. I have a great doctor. I've had him for 20 years. I'm healthy. I run. I'm. Why do I care that the guy down the street doesn't have health care insurance?" Well, because from what I understand, and you correct me, that person ends up in the ER instead of a health clinic like you all's, and that impacts me. I have health insurance, thank goodness. But does that, you know, talk about that phenomena, that it impacts everyone if somebody ends up in the ER and, and runs up bills because they have no insurance. Absolutely, that's absolutely the case. You hit it right on the head. Uh, it impacts us in all kinds of ways, not only for the emergency room, which is the obvious thing that we see, um, but it impacts the cost of our own health insurance premiums. Um, the chronic disease uh, problems that go untreated uh, affect work productivity. So there's all kinds of, of implications that you don't see on the surface, and it's not until you start scratching under that surface when you see that it's uh, the impact that it could have. And for that person next door who thinks that, well, it's not me, it's the person next door, We've all heard the stories of, you know, there but by the grace of God go I. It could happen to any one of us at any time. Robin, as far as the healthcare district, is this something, you know, expanding um, this kind of outreach, do you think that, you know, the board would be excited about? I think, like I said, that Medical Home Day is consistent with the mission for the healthcare district of Palm Beach County to deliver these comprehensive healthcare services to make residents aware of all the different programs that are available, whether it be through the Healthcare District of Palm Beach County or other agencies. Palm Beach County is very fortunate to have so many programs and in place to support the safety net. It's making residents aware that they can avail themselves of this pro these programs, how to navigate the system, as you say. So I think that, uh, that this is a great way to start making a difference.
Well, I want to be able to have about a minute to put up your information because certainly I know you gave out the number, but I want everybody to be able to jot it down um, and put up some information about not only your community health center, but there are several other clinics, about a dozen, that participated in Medical Home Day. And if people didn't get a chance to get there on Medical Home Day, perhaps they'd like to um, call and make an appointment for another day. I thank you both for your, this is a great project, and let's hope we see another one in the coming year and all you do every day. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you for friends. having us on. Thank you. Thank you. Here is that information you may need to make an appointment at one of the community health centers that took part in Medical Home Day. Now, if you weren't able to jot that all down, simply log on to the Quantum Foundation website. You can see the website there on your screen and click on the Health Center icon. It's all there for you. Thank you for joining us this week on Your Healthy Community. We hope to see you next time. Until then, make it a safe and healthy week. Good night. Your Healthy Community is underwritten by the Quantum Foundation. Quantum Foundation is dedicated to advancing access to health care and education for the residents of Palm Beach County. Quantum concentrates its mission in several areas to assure that all Palm Beach County residents have access to quality health care at reasonable cost, to improve quality of care, provide support for people with chronic health conditions, and to promote healthy communities and lifestyles through educational programming.